mom. Hey, Andrea. Welcome to Tuesdays with Andrea podcast. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. You guys, my mom has been so helpful in l- creating the design, finding furniture, helping me with doing sound checks, video checks, uh, decorating the room. She's the number one supporter for this podcast. And she has such a powerful story. And it's something that a lot of people wouldn't want to talk about. And with everything going on with COVID-19, we also hear about domestic violence being increased and a lot of people struggling. And so I think there's a lot of parallels from your story that might be helpful and impactful, for sure, inspiring to other people. And just to see God's provision for your life, I think is incredible. Yeah, that along with the faith is huge. And one of the scriptures that would motivate me is get off your shaky legs and walk straight because other people behind you are walking. And that's what would motivate me to move on. It's one thing when you yourself go through things, but when you have uh, children, and or even if you don't have children, for those of you that have nieces or nephews or little ones that, you know, there's always someone watching you. Mm-hmm. And you want to pull up those bootstraps and you want to be the best that you can be. My mom and dad had nine of us. And we grew up on the east side of Aurora. And Tomcats, woohoo! <laughs> Shout out Tomcats. Tomcats, woohoo! Easter High School, out the door in '84. Hey, um, <laughs> I was the second to the baby, and my other sisters and brothers were older, so it came down to three of us at home in the end. Mm-hmm. And we, yeah, we were pretty close. The three sisters, three you, sisters. Alma, and Thelma. Yeah. What about growing up with grandma and grandpa, both working full time or having factory jobs? I mean, having both (laughs) parents work outside the home. Yeah, it's crazy. Kind of raised ourselves. And I think you can relate to that, too. Like We'd pack ourselves lunches and we would like go walking to the park and my dad would work nights and my mom worked during the day. Did you like childhood? I think I kind of got lost in there somewhere because we had such a big family, too. I mean, we would always have people over too. We always had our our relatives come over and my parents would always open up the door to people that needed help too. So felt invisible growing up. When did you realize that? No, not for a long time later. Were you happy? Yeah. 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 For the most part. I mean, I had my friends and. So what makes you say invisible now? Looking more closely at my sister's. Alma was older and coming from a Latino family you think oh she's going to get married soon and she's going to leave us and Thelma was the baby so I got lost in there so I found myself always trying to achieve elsewhere like through school through academics or through sports Mm -hmm. school so I was Mm -hmm. trying to find my own spot where do I really fit in Mm -hmm. here did school become the place where you achieved where you excelled where you gained attention I think I really excelled at school for a while there until I met your dad. And then it got a little more difficult there. And then what happened? I was senior class president. I met your dad. It was my 16th birthday party. Very uh, charismatic kind of person. He was just really a super s- sweet, very emotional, someone who would talk through his feelings and just, um, oh, you deserve this. You deserve so much more. You know, putting all that attention and affection And when you get that much attention and affection, it's like, wow, it becomes your world. All of a sudden, the grades aren't as much as they used to be. Right. Because now you're starting to show a lack of effort or maybe a lack of achievement because you haven't been putting the same attention towards school. And I think a little bit more was, and we're going to touch on that whole issue, when you have someone where he's so sweet and wonderful and nice and you're getting all this attention and you're loving it. It's like, wow, it's just great. I mean, he he just showered me with so much. And then all of a sudden you see little red flags and you kind of dismiss them. Mm-hmm. Like what? Um, like if you'd get really upset or angry and you would just like justify it. Oh, well, he must have just been having a bad day. But you realize, wait a minute here, looking back... When things are that extreme, when it's either really good or really bad, 
Mm -hmm. And what did Dhamma and Alma say about it? Like, did they see the pattern? Was grandpa or grandma worried at that time? Was anybody concerned? But you get that whole, but I love him. But I love him. And then I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. How old were you? I was 17. So 17 with twins. Yeah. How was that? Crazy. Well, and it was really even more emotional because then you have this person that you just love so much. And I had so much going for me initially, senior class president, and I wanted to go to school. I wanted to go to college. And then all of a sudden, you have somebody who's telling you that they, they really wanted to have a child because they really needed... Oh, did you get pregnant on purpose? Yeah. Kind of. You got pregnant on purpose? Yeah. Why? You know, it's just manipulation at that time. And it wasn't truth later. I found out it wasn't truth, but it was a real drama thing. It really was a drama thing. But the Like point, what? And I felt so bad thinking, oh my gosh, I can do this. I can give him this. I could save you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can do this together and you can have someone and we'll have this great life. Did you guys already have jobs? I mean, I always had a job. But like, if you're going to get pregnant, like, no, s- sustain, I mean, like, like, you guys didn't think that far out. Well, I mean, I was cutting hair. At 16? But you were in high school. I finished barber school before I finished uh, high school because I did it through a DECA program, like a cooperative education program. So I really had that. And I took that because I asked my mom what she always wanted to do when she grew up and she wanted to cut hair. I thought I can do that. I can do something she's always wanted to do. And she and I can always take this with me, a skill. When I'm in college, I can make extra money on the side. Mm-hmm. So I went to Barber College. Mm-hmm. And I got that, that skill. Little did I know that that would be my whole future career. Barbering. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it helped. Yeah, sure did. Basically, sure that, did. thank God you got that. Yeah, exactly. Because imagine if you would have graduated with nothing. With nothing. Right. And then where would you be? Right. right. Like at least you had a trade. Right. Wow. Mm-hmm. So here we did try to get pregnant. We finally did. And were you guys happy at that point? Were you guys yeah. like, hey? Oh, yeah. Pretty excited. And then scared. What did Grandma Wella, Wella and Wello say? Did, did you tell them right away that you were pregnant? Yeah, I think we did. And they were just like, oh, okay. Grandma and Grandpa were like, you don't have to marry him just because you're pregnant. Know that you don't have to marry him. That's where you know that they saw the red flags. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, but he, I love him. But no, really, you do not have to. We will help you. We'll be here for you. Did you live at home at that time? Yes. And then once I decided to really stay with your dad, even though he started. So he actually started abusing me even when I was pregnant. Really? Mm-hmm. Like hitting? Yeah. Yes, but not to the extreme. Now, that's one thing that's really understanding is that it does progress. It doesn't start out like like he may push me, but that's abuse. Like he would push you? He would put his hands on you? Like just push me. And yeah. you don't think anything of that. I mean, I was raised around a bunch of boys, so I didn't think much about the pushing. But were your feelings hurt? Of course they were. Of course. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, it's like that frog in the warm in the pan, water. Yeah. yeah. It starts off like just a little bit of... And you just kind of brush it off. And you brush it off. And then you get pregnant. And then he's actually physically abusive when I'm pregnant. Like how? Like... He, like hitting you? Yeah, like, like hitting me, even in the stomach. Kicking me, hitting me. <sighs> yeah, that was bad. And... Did anybody else know? I honestly don't remember. But it only happened at home or where? Yeah, oh, oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, No, he would never be abusive in public. Mm -hmm. So then he went to jail. And then I moved in with your well on Willow. So you guys were still together? Yes. He's in jail now. You're pregnant still. You move in with your Mm in-laws. And then what? And I visit him and I'm there and... When they're in jail, it's like a whole different person. Of course, they promise you the world, and you're not getting that abuse anymore. You're getting the best part of them again. The sweet person is there again. The poems and the mm-hmm. letters and all those things and the encouragement. And, mm-hmm. and then right before you guys were born, we petitioned for him to get out. When we found out we are going to have twins, and they might come early, 
by the grace of God, for some reason, they allowed him to come out early. And he was there for you guys when we were born. So I, I do remember the abuse and I do remember those episodes. And during that time, that's, it's, a, it's a different person. Right. It is a different right. person. So there's that Dr. Then, Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He's but then, yep. super sweet. He took such good care of you girls. Totally. Like he, right. Mm -hmm. you know I mean? We would go to the park. We would have ice cream. We would roll down the hills. And we would go walk and look at the water. I mean, still, when we see him. Machine. It's two different people. Mm -hmm. But the person that is the one that's assaulting, that's a different yeah. person. Yeah. And so, so to separate that. So how did you get over that what did you do so we're now we're born you're 17 turning 18 mm -hmm. and you're living with your in-laws and you graduated already you're working as a barber mm -hmm. and then what and the abuse would still happen and I'm working and I would take you girls fortunately being a barber I was able to take you with me to some of my jobs and put you in a playpen and cut hair I was grateful for that yeah and I just remember your, all of your colleagues and co-workers yeah. they're so nice yeah. I remember Hanover Park yeah. Lee's yeah. Barbershop I remember Baldera's Barbershop downtown Aurora even through all of that you know I did lose a lot of friends there are friends that you lose when you're in an abusive relationship like that what they'll try to do is they'll try to isolate you it's like that's not a good friend that's not a good friend all of a sudden none of your friends are good friends you know you'll find something wrong with each of your friends for one reason or another, to justify not being able to spend time with your friends. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the isolation. And you don't realize it, but you want to keep the peace. My friend list started shortening. And then I start focusing on just the three of us. You two, myself, and, you know, he was in and out of jail. But because the good times were so good, that sometimes the bad times... You just work through it because I'm a scrapper. I'm a fighter. Mm -hmm. And I would think I can do it. I can, I can, I can make do. I can handle this. Mm -hmm. But it got to the point where when you're small and I see you two and I'm looking at you and really realizing I'm teaching you that this is normal. If I stay here, you're going to think that this is the way men should normally treat women. Mm -hmm. And dads should treat moms. And I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that for you guys. So I thought, I can be strong enough for me, but I need to be even stronger for you. Mm -hmm. So as much as I loved him, and I do believe that you do love the person and you give everything. And that's the other aspect is you think you've invested so much in this person. You don't want to walk away. But sometimes you've got to count those losses like really what am I really going to lose here? How long did it take you? You girls were six years old. And honestly, I cannot even take credit for that. I have to say the state of Illinois is what was huge on that. Because it would escalate. The abuse escalated to the point where he became a stalker. And, it, and I would leave and he'd stalk me and I'd leave and he would stalk me and move to another place and moved in the plane break in there and you'd break in there and, and so finally the, the state of Illinois was like either you get out of Illinois or we're going to put you in prison for a long time mm -hmm. so he had to leave and I think that's what saved my life or, or you know or his because mm -hmm. at that point in my mind I really thought either he was going to die or I was going to die mm -hmm. one or the other and what made you get to that point? The abuse escalates. It doesn't get better. It just gets uglier. And if, if you're with an abuser and they see that you'll take that much, then they're always going to push it. Mm -hmm. You'll take more and you'll take more. And so when you find yourself looking in the mirror, and at one point I had one eye was closed shut and the other one I could barely, barely see out of it. Barely. And to know that it's like, wow. And that didn't even make me leave. That didn't make me leave. I remember watching you try to figure out how to hide your bruises on your face with makeup. Mm -hmm. One time in the apartment, we were separated from him. He shows up 
and he just starts going at you. Mm -hmm. My sister goes under the table, you're under the table, and he goes under the table. In my mind, I'm like, Andrea, what are you going to do here? You're going to cry? Because I was crying, and the phone is on the wall. Mm -hmm. So I get up, and everybody's huddled, though. So it's like getting up is, like, scary. I just dart towards that wall, and he goes, and he yelled, Andrea, don't you dare touch that phone. And I looked at him, and I was just like, help please you know and i and uh i just remember thinking at that moment man this is that bad this Mm -hmm. is that bad this is bad and that was i think even before i don't was that before or after the shelter we stayed at the shelter when you guys were two years old so it's probably afterwards okay so this is way after that's a long time Yeah, so you were two years old when we actually stayed in that shelter for battered women. So and how got, did you end up there? Like how, what, so you're at Wella and Wello's house, mm-hmm. and then now, and then did you move out, and then have to, or did you go back home with Grandma and Grandpa? No, I didn't, because I, I think at that time, because I chose your dad, they were angry. and Grandma and Grandpa were? Yeah, Grandpa. Okay. Right, and... It's like, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how people don't understand. It's not like if you want to be in that situation yeah. and you don't like, oh, I don't like to get beat up. No, that's ridiculous. No. Yeah. But it's like you still feel like you have to try to make that old saying, you made your bed, now lie in it. Mm. And so you feel like you have to make this work. And so... When, the, when your family feel like you have to make this work kind of thing, now that you made, initially they said, you know, you don't have to marry him, but once you married him, that's it. You yeah, married him. then you weren't leaving. It was, it was still happening mm-hmm. and you weren't leaving. And what else could they do except shut you kind of out at mm-hmm. that point? You're truly lost in the mess and mm-hmm. you can't really see. Mm-hmm. And so what made you go to the shelter? I don't remember how I got there. I just remember us living there. Mm-hmm. And how long did we live there until we got kicked out? (laughs) I'd say maybe three, four weeks. All I remember was they had technology, like they had the TV and they had some sort of console or something out at that time that we did not, I did not see before. And I just remember thinking like, this place is great. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember (laughs) <laughs> they had something there that I'm like, this is great. Yeah. Don't remember. Isn't it funny how we have different yeah, memories of yeah. it? Like, And I think I was still like pretty much an optimist still, uh-huh. even no matter what was going on at that time. It's like, you're always looking for the best because I have to, you know, cause you're looking at me still, your sister's looking at me still. And even with that, I mean, I think you girls were pretty optimistic too, which is so awesome because no matter, I mean, it's, we can laugh at this now because we're so out of it. It's like telling someone else's story. And that's the beauty of the healing process is when you allow yourself to heal from this and you, you, you get out of it, when you overcome it and heal, you can look back and it's someone else's story almost. It's like, it's as different as a caterpillar and a butterfly. You mm-hmm. know that was part of your life, but you can't even relate to it anymore because mm-hmm. you have such a different life now. And it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hmm, yeah, we did go through that. Yeah, we did experience that. I mean, yeah, wow. Yeah, I didn't realize, wow, I didn't realize we were homeless. Wow, I didn't realize that. And several times. But the the beauty of it was even though we were kicked out from these different places because he would break in, he'd stalk me and break in, and we'd have to find a new place to live. You didn't see it that way, and your sister Mm-mm. never saw it that way. Because you made the best of it. I mean, you yeah. made it fun. You made our life. The beauty of of growing up with you as a mom in that way was when we were all together. It was there was nothing wrong in the world. It was like when we were ad- all together. It was a new adventure. Was, everything was a new. Maybe that's why I love adventures as an adult. Is because I just remember. We always had a new adventure. You're right. Everything was an adventure. Or when I would look and say, okay, you guys want to come with me to go look at this new place, this new apartment? No, Mom. You don't have to go. You always pick such a beautiful place for us to live. Yeah. And it's true. And so that's something that, you know, it's like, wow, 
looking at that, it's like, wow. And the grace of God. So when you guys were two years old is when I actually, like, I was raised as a Catholic. Mm -hmm. And then when we lived at the shelter, I met some friends that shared Jesus with me. Mm -hmm. Not religion, just really shared Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting at the shelter and I'm on the phone and they're talking about this Jesus that loves me no matter what. And that was something that was so profound to me because I always looked at God and Jesus as that one up in heaven looking at everything you do wrong and ready to point their finger at you and condemn you for everything you've done wrong. And good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought. And I couldn't understand when I was going through the abuse. I remember huddling in in the closet, hiding by myself in the closet. And crying out, saying, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. Because you that you used to love that closet. I used to love the tub, <laughs> you too. You used to always find some closet. <laughs> <laughs> so here I would go and I'd hide in the closet and say, why is this happening? Good things happen to good people. Bad things happen to bad people. And I don't understand why this is happening to me because I'm a good person. And you just get up and you go on the next day. And you just keep moving forward. And that's what you do. That's what I did. I Mm -hmm. just, I kept moving forward. Okay, today's a new day. Today's a new day. So when I heard about this Jesus and really loved me, just loved me, I couldn't quite understand it quite yet. Mm -hmm. So it was funny going to Calvary, a big church, and they would have these altar calls if you want to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come forward. I had to go, I think, like every single altar call for like six months. I went forward to make sure, to make sure, to make sure, to make sure that he really loved me and accepted me. You heard me, right? Right? You You got this? (laughs) For real? Are you for real? Yeah. Are you serious? Are you really? You're serious? Okay. <laughs> right? I'm getting in, right? My name's on the list, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go forward to make sure to make sure. Because see, when you have someone that says they love you and they disappoint you and the hurt or betray, it's just so hard to really, really, really believe it. Mm-hmm. So I had to make sure to make sure to make sure to make sure. And then... Uh, your dad wound up in jail again. And that's the other thing that's so beautiful is that even in hard times, if we look around for the the helpers, there's Mm. always helpers. There's always, you know, for the bad that happens in our life, if we learn to focus on the good and look at the good people, that will encourage you. Mm Mm-hmm. Because there are bad people in this world, well, and there are good people in right. this world. I mean, when like I, Kathy and Greg. Right, but if look at even through the hardships that we've endured, even what we were just saying a minute ago where, you know, you saw the, the you remember the, the hard and ugly things with your dad, but you also remember the good, and we focus on the good, and that's what we choose to do, and, and that's people. what helps move forward. Yeah. And I think no matter what happened, because eventually we know that your dad and I got divorced, and through that, it's like I, I left because I wanted more for you too. Mm-hmm. I wanted more. I didn't want you to think that men really treated women like this. Mm-hmm. And so I left. And and during that time, you were a barber mm-hmm. and you were a single mom. So you didn't have any um, income from my dad to help out mm-hmm. with payments. And no you also support. weren't taking money from grandma and grandpa you were completely on your own which is why we moved around so much Mm -hmm. is because you know rents rent basically it's kind of like okay we're here for a year and then we're going to go somewhere Mm -hmm. else so that has to be tough especially when you're still young you're still early 20s with two girls Mm -hmm. like what were you thinking were you in a good place at that point were you Worried? Were you confident? Like God's got this? Even through the hard times, I was learning to rely on faith. I didn't have that support at that time that I needed from, I mean, people cared and loved for me, but sometimes it's just you have to find that on your own, that strength. And you have to find your own faith and you have to find your own strength. And 
So I would just open up the Bible, and I'd, even if I didn't understand it, I mean, boy, King David, the way he would lament, oh, man, I could relate to those psalms so good. I felt like everything was coming at me, and I could feel that passion that he felt, or I could feel the betrayal that he felt and the hurts and the lamenting that he felt. And I would read Psalms. I would literally read those out loud that encouraged me too. It's like when you have no one else to encourage you, self be encouraged, Mm -hmm. self be encouraged. So I had to tell myself, be encouraged. And, and I learned to get through the scriptures and that would encourage me. And if we didn't have a place in between apartments when we had to move, you know, we had a, um, some other dear friends, Kathy and Greg, you mentioned earlier, who allowed us to stay in their home and we lived there for a while. And they were just a blessing to us too. Mm-hmm. So God, I believe he will send in those helpers who will encourage you and that will help lead you and, you know, who helped me. I remember when we were there at Kathy and Greg's, and we would sleep on their sofa bed, mm-hmm. you, me, and my sister all together. Right. And we're in their living room, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's like they don't have space either. And we're p- basically right there in the middle. And so at nighttime, though, he would put on the TV. Yeah. And it was the three, three stooges. Three stooges, yeah. And it was, you know, the <laughs> old black and white. And I just, I didn't even like them. I didn't even like them. I don't think that that they humor funny. is funny to me, but I loved it. I just loved it because we would watch it together. Yeah, together. Oh, yes. Right, right. And we were just like, it was just uh, a distraction of fun. And you don't have to think about anything else mm-hmm. other than you're watching Mo and Larry, Larry and Curly. Curly. <laughs> <laughs> and one morning we woke up and we're in their living room. And all of a sudden, Kathy and Greg come and they hid Easter eggs all over the inside of the house. Mm. Do you remember that? No. And they had baskets for us. I will never forget that Easter. Kathy and Greg, if you guys are listening right now, I hope you guys have a fantastic, blessed life. (laughs) Yeah. Because that was uh, one of those times when people show up. Mm -hmm. They show up and show out. Mm -hmm. It's so good. I mean, I look back and it's like, how do we do all the things that we did? I don't even know. I don't even know. I think with you girls too, I kind of had that joy also because it was an adventure. We kept it together as an adventure, the three of us against the world. Thank you for listening to Tuesdays with Andrea. There are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I appreciate you making the time to listen to mine. If you like this show and want to know more, check out TuesdaysWithAndrea.com or please leave a review on iTunes or drop a line in the YouTube comment section. Until next time, please stay kind in your mind, nice on the web, and stay hella hopeful in your heart.